Linux gaming, especially high performance Linux gaming, that's gotta be an oxymoron, right? No, there's more to this story. So right now, today, we are doing testing on RX Vega, and I wish this was a video about benchmarks and performance, or how to set it up, or all of that. It's not that. This is more of just a status update, what have we been working on. And also, to announce that we're giving away this machine. Actually, you've only got a couple of days left to enter it's toward the end of the contest, because testing this thing has been kicking my butt, because it is ludicrously complicated, and there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. But this is a fully open source GPU stack. We've been doing testing with a Fury, but also RX Vega. And RX Vega 64 outperforms the 1080 Ti in most scenarios on Linux, which is mind blowing. And that is with a fully open source graphics stack. How insane is that? I mean, you know, it, things, it's like the, the, the you know, the, the second coming and a fully open source Linux graphics driver stack. I never thought we would see that in 2017. Now to be sure, it's not ready yet. It's, I'm not sure that it's even close to ready yet, but there's a lot of people out there that are putting a lot of hard work into this. But first, the system. We're giving away a Ryzen 5 1600X gaming PC. This has got a Biostar Racing B350 GT5, an ADATA 16 gigabyte uh, kit of DDR4, an ADATA 128 gig SSD, a three terabyte storage hard drive, and it's Cooler Master, Cooler Master through and through. We've got the Master Liquid 120, the Master Box Lite RGB case, Master Watt 450 power supply, and an ROG Strix RX 570, which is among the, uh, the graphics cards that I've been testing with this thing. So, I've been doing a lot of testing, been doing a lot of testing on Linux. Now, the only thing on Linux that I wouldn't recommend this board for is GPU pass-through, because it's a B350 chipset and the IOMMU groups are not right for that. But other than that, it's made a perfectly snappy little Linux machine. You've got Civ native on Linux. You've got you know uh, uh, Deus Ex Mankind divided on Linux. You've got a lot of, of Linux games that are uh, you know available these days. The graphics performance has historically not been as good as on Windows, and that's still true even with the fully open source graphics stack. But if this is something that you want to get into, like if you don't mind getting your hands dirty and you don't mind putting in the work. Uh, well, we could use you. We could use all the work that, that we can get from, from enthusiasts. If you're a computer science student and you want to look at how these things are put together and, and help out, you want to get a, an RX Vega, I think my recommendation is going to be RX Vega 56, if this is what you're into. Now, it is not going to be a plug and play solution at the time of this video. I've done a lot of work on kernel 4.14, RC1, RC2, kernel 1.15. Uh, there's a version of Git that's AMD staging that has a lot of the patches that AMD has submitted. There are lots of developers working on this, uh, but I'm not sure that it's for the uninitiated yet. Um, if you want basically a plug and play solution, it kind of exists in the closed source AMD GPU library, but that's the one that I tested uh, a couple of weeks ago when RX Vega actually released. And well, more than a couple of weeks ago, actually, I guess. But uh, it, the performance was, was not really there. And there's still weird, glitches and weird performance issues because we are running like we're literally the developers are committing code before the developers are even saying oh yeah this is totally ready we're, we're checking it out again and uh trying to do stuff with it doing most of this on ubuntu now i've also done a lot of work on fedora and arch honestly i think it's most usable on arch right now there's there are really talented developers that use arch and so there are really talented developers that are looking at all this unfold on arch and then they're sort of manually applying it uh, in, in the Arch universe, sort of the Arch way of doing things. And so if you adopt Arch and you understand Arch, you may have an easier time with this GPU. Uh, with Fedora and Ubuntu, they're lagging behind a little bit more, but it seems like some of the developers that are actually working on solving the problem and doing the code are using Ubuntu themselves. So I would say that the most bleeding edge code is actually probably under Ubuntu because that seems to be what the developers are using that are actually you know, uh, doing the work for AMD and doing the work for the community and, and that sort of thing. Although not universally, I mean, you know, every de developer is different. I, I hesitate a little bit making a, a sweeping statement like that. But it's been a lot of fun <laughs> messing around with this, you know, the Cooler Master Ryzen 5 1600X. And we're giving it away. We're literally giving it away. This, you've only got like one day left to enter. To, so if you're watching this, like after October 3rd, uh, you're too late. We already gave it away. So you should see who won and then congratulate them because hey, that's the machine that we pioneered RX Vega. Because my goal 
is to make a how-to or to make a tutorial that is like the IOMMU tutorials where you can basically just follow the steps and it kind of explains what you got to be thinking in order to be able to in order to be able to follow through and do it. And so if this is something that you want to undertake knowing, you know, all those caveats, uh, I want to introduce you to Paulo DS. He is he is uh, doing great work. He is uh, thank you. Thank you Paulo DS because he's put together um, some of the patches and some of the stuff so you can add this PPA and then just do an apt get update and this gives you most of what you need. Now you'll still need an updated kernel um, because this doesn't include the kernel, this is just all of the other stuff, but the updated X server and that sort of thing, yes, you can add this PPA and basically be off to the races. Now for me, I had uh, I had trouble. I upgraded to kernel 4.14 RC1 and RC2. You have to get proprietary firmware for the card that's actually, the firmware actually loads on the card, uh, which is not, the firmware itself is not open source. Um, and once you've done all that, then hopefully everything is good. N not always, sometimes the, the console hangs. So if this is something that you're going to do, you're definitely going to want to set up SSH on your machine to be sure that you can SSH in from another machine. So if you're going to be Captain Kernel Hacker and try to put together a how-to and investigate RX Vega, and you're willing, you know, you're willing to do all of that, um, make sure you can SSH into your machine because driver combinations and, and that sort of thing will completely hang your machine from the console and your only option will be to remote in. That said, I haven't had any hard locks since kernel 4.14 RC1. A hard lock is really annoying because when your machine completely locks up and you can't do anything, you're boned. Like, you don't even necessarily get a good error report from that because it didn't write to disk what the error actually was. Haven't had that since kernel 4.14 RC1. So that's really good. So if this is something you're embarking on, make sure you can remote into your machine over the network would be my first recommendation. Step two, if you are gonna use Ubuntu, make sure that you configure Grub with a menu. So when you reboot your machine, you get a Grub menu and you can edit your kernel uh, command line so that you can boot Linux single or something like that. If you don't do that, keep a bootable USB stick of Ubuntu around because uh, yeah, being able to boot off that and then mount your root partition is a really handy thing to be able to do uh, so that you can fix or undo whatever it is that you just did. Um, for RX Vega, uh, in your modules file, you will have to enable experimental hardware. There's a module parameter, so if you reboot and it doesn't work, you can look at the kernel messages with DMESG and it'll say, hey, uh, I detected you got RX Vega. We don't automatically enable that. You've got to add this module parameter that's enable experimental hardware uh, in order to run RX Vega. So I'll at least put the how-tos for those things uh, in the in the article that goes with this video. So it's just really basic stuff. But know that you're gonna get your hands dirty, know that it's not gonna be plug and play, and know that you're gonna be spending a lot of time setting this up as of you know October 2017. The landscape may change in the next 30, 60, 90 days. Uh, but for right now, you're gonna get your hands dirty and all that. The payoff though, if you do all of that, is that you get the fastest GPU on Linux that exists right now as of October 2017. Uh, and especially that is fully open source. So yeah, the uh, RX Vega 64 is not faster than the 1080 Ti with its closed source driver on Linux in all cases, but testing Civ and some other games that, that are pretty well optimized, the RX Vega 64 is outperforming the Vega 56. Now I don't have hard numbers or anything like that for you yet because I don't feel that the software is stable enough. I don't know if it's culling polys when it's not supposed to or anything like that. Visually, graphically, it basically looks okay. Although there was a weird problem last week where uh, it seems like something bad happened to the colors. It seemed like it was trying to render 24-bit color in like 16-bit color space or something like that uh, because it was some really seriously funky stuff. That has since been fixed, so that's good. Uh, but I don't really like, I can't imagine unleashing that on the, on the uninitiated. So that's what I've been up to. And that's also why there haven't been a whole bunch of videos. We've done some live streams on the, the IOMMU setup. So we've got that on both platforms. Also been working with vendors to try to resolve some of the weirdnesses on the Threadripper platform with IOMMU. So if, if, if you're a tinkerer and you also like gaming actually natively on Linux, that's really good. Should also mention the Gallium Direct 3D, Direct 3D9 driver has been updated in all of this for AMD GPU. So you can get blistering Direct 3D9 performance on Linux through Wine. So what does that mean? It means, it means you can run Wine, Wine is not an emulator, uh, and that means you're running Windows binaries natively 
on Linux as opposed to through a virtual machine or something like that. And the Direct 3D9 performance is actually very good on RX Vega. However, you have to run a version of AMD GPU that is from about three and a half weeks ago to not have issues. At least that was my own personal experience. Um, so I'm not really sure what was that. And I haven't really figured out why um, the very latest version of things, like it just disables the console, like it just kills everything. And I'm not really sure why. I've got, I've tried a couple of different firmware versions and I've got the firmware that's actually bundled with the kernel update from the PPA. So if you wanna try the kernel that I tried, there's a link to that, uh, we can take a look at that. And I'll also mention too that the Pharonix website is really good. A lot of Linux fans over there, they're doing really, really good work. They do a lot of benchmarking and, and, and early stuff, although like steps to replicate are not always there. It's like, what, what steps do we need to do to replicate this? And it's like, ah, just do some stuff. Not always there. Uh, part of it is not really, uh, uh, you know, it's not really, uh, not really a thing to do with Pharonix. It's more just because everything is so bleeding edge. Also done some experiments with machine learning. That's getting there. That's getting there really fast, but that's still not quite there yet. Um, the CAFI framework works best, but I would like to not use the CAFI framework. I would like to use some other, some other stuff. So RX Vega support is being added for that as well. Um, I'll also mention the AMD Staging Next repo. So if you wanna if you wanna clone the kernel from Git and copy your running config and totally compile that, you can totally do that. I would suggest the AMD uh, you know Staging Next branch, um, Staging DRM Next branch, uh, if you wanna do that. Because I've had pretty good success with that uh, particular branch of the Linux kernel in doing my own testing. So it is really really exciting. Uh, I can say that Civ 6, the performance has been impressive. Um, I've just got a demo system behind me. It's not everything, not everything put together. So too long didn't watch summary. Uh, RX Vega is really exciting on Linux. The fully open source GPU stack is getting along. There are many, many thankless individuals that are like super nerdy, but don't have a YouTube channel to you know hang out on. If any of them are watching this and it's like, yeah, I was working on AMD GPU and they want to do an interview or come on and say hi or you know, tell us about some of the, the horrible things that they faced or engineers inside of AMD or people that are working with AMD or just, you know, Colonel Hacker or you know, Apollo. Hey, you know, hi, if you want to say hi to the audience, then, you know, by all means that I think that would be a lot of fun. Uh, it's it is experimental. I bang my head against the keyboard just as much as the next guy, but it is a lot of fun. And you know, the payoff is that you're you're the first one to get to play with the toys. You're the first one to get to play with the bleeding edge stuff. And there's enough stuff here that I've seen the future and it's looking pretty good. And it's looking pretty good for AMD. We're not there yet. It's not plug and play. It's not as easy as it is on other platforms. That is something we have to work together to work on. And it's gonna be a lot of development that's not fun. It's gonna be a lot of development that is you know, backbreaking, grueling work for the developers that is, is largely thankless. Uh, but in order to get there, to make it better for everybody, that's what we have to endure. So it's really, really exciting. Giving this machine away, don't forget to go enter the contest. It's gonna be great doing a doing the giveaway with the Tech Deals channel. Be sure to check that out. So I'm Wendell, I'm signing out. And if you have any comments or guides or somebody actually has put together a how-to already on this and I just missed it and it's actually way easier than I'm making it out to be, let me know because uh, right now it's looking like Arch is the easy way to go, but I'm trying to do all this on, on Ubuntu for the masses. So we'll see how that goes. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out and I'll see you later.